Hey guys, welcome me back. Brian Brown doing for another episode of Todd versus BBD. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I don't, yeah. So I heard that Brad uh, on Monday said that I got fired, and that's just not true. Otherwise, this would be me hijacking this video. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I need an air marshal, please. <laughs> Okay, but uh, today uh, we are going to be playing uh, some some control on black action. Uh, Brian is going to be playing black green devotion. I'm yep. playing bullet red control. And this deck popped up at uh, SCG Cincinnati yep. uh, just a, a week and some change ago. And we're going to be playing that. And we're going to go over the deck tech real quick before we actually get into the match. But let's take a look. So uh, as you can see, there's a lot of the very normal elements for blue-white base control decks. We have Sphinx Revelation, Jace Architect of Thought, Elspeth, Supreme Verdict. This is the core of the deck that doesn't really change. Dissolve, Syncopate, these are in most lists. Uh, Syncopate sometimes gets cut, but Dissolve is almost always there. Now, the interesting part is the, the new cards and the red cards. We yeah. have uh, Karanos, God of Storms. Brian, what do you think about this guy? I think he's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, like a, a lot of the old uh, blue white red lists were playing cards like Assemble the Legion. I think that card's not very good. Um, and I think Karanos is just pretty much a, a complete upgrade to that card. Yeah, I mean, he, he feels like a really powerful card draw engine that also, like, you know, if you draw a lane, you get to have a chance to draw a spell. But if you draw a spell, you can sometimes kill a creature or just start threatening your opponent's life total. And this guy can actually act as a win condition. Even though we can't turn him into a creature, I think he's still cool. Uh, just his ability seems really powerful. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the other very interesting card I thought was uh, added to this deck was Firemind's Foresight. And we can actually do a lot of cool things. Unfortunately, we only have one uh, spell that costs one mana that we can get with this, which is Quicken. But the fact that you can get Quicken off of it lets you have the ability to go, like, when you start uh, taking control of the game, you can fire Mind's Foresight for, like, to, uh, a Sphinx's Revelation, a Quicken, and some two mana, like, removal spell or what have you. And then you have a Quicken Supreme Verdict for the rest of the game, which is kind of an interesting combo. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree. And I like the fact that. Uh, Firemind's Foresight also works neatly with like the the fuse cards. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so uh, in the main deck we do have one turn and burn, which you can act as either a three mana spell to get with it or a two mana spell to get with it, depending on it. Like if you need to get two removal spells to kill two creatures, you can go get Last Breath and Turn and Burn because you can use Turn as the three drop that you get. Right. Uh, in the sideboard we do have one copy of Wear and Terror, which also you can go get either the two mana side of it or the one mana side of it for the Firemind's Foresight. Uh, rounding out the rest of the deck, instead of playing Quad Detention Sphere, we're playing two Banishing Light, two Detention Sphere, so that if our opponent hits us uh, with Detention Sphere on our Elspeth or Jace, we can actually unlock that with a Banishing Light, whereas we can't unlock it with a Detention Sphere. Um, the downside to this is that, uh, especially in this match that we're about to play, is that if Brian gets a Pack Rat active, we're not going to be able to take care of all of his Pack Rats with a Detention Sphere if we are going to draw a Banishing Light. But I think the upside of being able to unlock uh, our, our stuff for an opposing tension here is pretty strong. Yeah, like I, I, especially without like an elixir in the deck, you can run into the situation where you're not able to win the game. Yeah. And having access to unlock your guys again is pretty important. Yeah, uh, the rest of the cards in the deck, just quick talk about it. Is that Charm is a pretty sweet uh, spell just as a, uh, a cheap counter spell or uh, a way to deal with like underworld connections on turn two is insane. Or you can actually just use it to kill creatures in, in, uh, against the aggressive matchups. There are very few times I think where I'm going to loot with it. Um, I think looting is like a desperation move if I need to hit land drops desperately. Or if it's like turn seven and I still have four lands in hand or something like that, then I'll probably use as a charm to, to cycle that way. And then we have a singleton copy of Deicide and Last Breath. Deicide is specifically interesting against the mono blue deck, I think, because that yep. right now I think that's the one that's the one matchup where you're gonna see a god card. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it, this also has just a lot of utility, killing any enchantment out of uh, black devotion, uh, the mirror match. And mono blue devotion, and most decks play uh, that don't do that have like Corsair crew fix if they're green. Uh, most decks will have a target for it, so I feel like it's very rarely going to be a dead card. Yeah, and it can also be like a blowout against a deck like Hexproof too, just getting something like when they don't expect it. Yeah, cool. So uh, as far as the band base is concerned, we have twelve Skylands, very similar to the Esper decks of uh, a few months ago. Uh, we have uh, two Steam Vents and one Sacred Foundry to give us eleven total red sources, and then uh, from the original list, I actually cut a Muta Vault for an extra red source just to make sure that we were. Uh, able to cast Is That Charm on turn two more consistently. I thought that might be important in a, a number of matchups, but it's a very minor change to the mana base. But guys, all right, well, uh, that's the main deck for Blue Eye Red Control. Let's go and take a look at the sideboard, and then I'm gonna beat the crap out of Brian. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the, the minor change I made to the sideboard from uh, the original list is that I cut uh, two Anger of the Gods for two more copies of Magma Spray. 
And I did that because I felt like a double red card in a deck with only 11 sources would be pretty hard to cast. And cards like Anger, Anger of the Gods, you really want to cast them on turn 3 or turn 4. And I feel like that the, the likelihood of that happening is just lower than what I would want to actually have the card in my sideboard. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, the, only, the only real downside is like you're a little bit worse against the Hexproof deck without Anger, but you're probably better against other aggressive decks just actually being able to cast Magma Shroud. Yeah, I think Magma Shroud is going to be one of the premier removal spells in the format moving forward and in, uh, in decks that can actually cast it consistently. I feel like a one-mana instant speed removal spell that can take care of like, Voice of Resurgence is pretty huge, especially from a control strategy because Voice of Resurgence is so powerful against you. Uh, we do have a couple ways to answer Hexproof. We have uh, two Celestial Flares but, uh, and, a, and a Wear and Tear, but I think mostly the control decks in general are, are actually pretty decent against the Hexproof decks. Yeah. I think Voice of Resurgence is one of the only cards that survives Supreme Verdict. Uh, like obviously they do have things like Boris Charm that can really uh, set you back, but um, I, I think that generally speaking we're, we're, dec we're pretty good against them. Uh, filling out the rest of the, the, the sideboard, we have uh, a couple creatures to, to have, uh, you know, threats that we can actually bring in and, and kill our opponent with as opposed to just Elspeth. We have uh, two Archangel of Thune, two Bremaz, King of Rescos, and an Aetherling. Now, I really like Bremaz and Aetherling to come in in the control matchups, whereas I like Bremaz and, Aeth and Archangel of Thune to come in against the aggressive matchups. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and then, uh, as far as counter spells are concerned for the control matchups, we have a Singleton Dispel. Uh, a pair of counter fluxes to just give us more uh, ways, like countering Sphinx Revelation and not allowing them to fight over it with their own dispels is pretty big. Uh, so I really like this combination. We can use dispel along with their own Sphinx Revelation to make sure it sticks, uh, as well as using uh, you know dispel plus like Etherlink to make sure it resolves. Uh, the rest of the sideboard uh, we have an Assemble the Legion that is fantastic against black control decks. Hopefully we'll get to see that here. Although Brian does have Golgari Charms in the sideboard, which will probably come in because it kills. Uh, Detention Sphere uh, and is able to uh, kill Symbol of the Legion and also uh, prevent Supreme Verdict from killing his whole team. And it can also wrath your token sometimes that can free up a Desecration Demon. Right, yeah, so that's pretty cool too. And then the Wear and Tear just coming in against, I guess, Artifacts or Enchantments. I don't, I don't really know. Strong, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about Wear and Tear. So, alright guys, well, that is Blue Light Red Control and let's go to fighting. Oh, let's do it. God.